What's up, guys? Welcome to Behind the Bikini, brand new podcast with myself, Sean Hector Lewis, and Miss Jordan Brennan. So welcome. (laughs) Welcome, everybody. We're so happy to be here and to start this for you guys. Yeah. So, you know, we were kind of discussing how we wanted to start this and and move forward. And I know a lot of you guys that are watching and listening have are familiar with us, but at the same time, I don't think you might you might not know where how we started in the sport, you know, where we came from. So uh thinking a little bit about every, you know, superhero out there has their origin story. So we thought we would give you guys our our origin story for ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. In our power pose. <laughs> yes, Superwoman or Wonder Woman or whatever, <laughs> whatever superhero it is that you uh, that you relate to, um, that kind of thing. So, um, Jordan, when did you actually start in the sport? I started very late in 2019. I think I started my prep in September, August or September of 2019. And I stepped on stage for the first time at the clash in November of 2019. So you're a baby in the sport. I am. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw that question right back at you though. How much, how, when did you start? 2009. <laughs> <laughs> I'm around a minute. I'm around, so I'm around you have a minute. all of 10 years on me. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I'm like, um, I think it was 2009. Now that I'm thinking about it, it might've been 2008. Actually, I'll pull up my, let me see. I'm pretty sure it's 2009. It was whatever year it was. It was the first year of bikini. Um, I can say, wow, like, because you have literally seen the change of bikini and figure and just how her sport has changed. You've seen all of those transitions. I sure have. I actually started in figure, went to bikini, then went back to figure. So I think it was 2009. Let me just look at this real quick and I can tell you for sure. Wow. So why did you originally switch from bikini to figure? Like, was that your feedback? Did you just want to train well, yeah it was it was it was 2009 it was 2009 okay. um 2009 knoxville classic was my very first show in tennessee um Aww. and i started with figure that was the very first year the bikini was around um got it so back then bikini was very very different um even figure was very very different figure back then wouldn't even be competitive in bikini today so wow. Like it was, it was completely different, completely different. There's actually, so there's one, two, three, three girls besides myself from my very first show in Knoxville, Tennessee that are still involved in the industry today that I'm still friends with. So really, yeah. So Whitney Weiser, who does the um, Nashville Fit Show, she was in my very, yep. She was in my very first show, bikini. She was in bikini. Um, Kaylin Maynard, Maynard is another one. She um, she hasn't competed in a few years, but she still helps Whitney and stuff with her show and everything there back in Tennessee as well. Actually, Kaylin, I did her makeup when she won her pro card um, in wow. North Americans and figure. I can't remember what year that was. I think that was, was it 2000? I think it was 2011. I'm pretty sure it was 2011. Um, wow. She won the overall at North Americans. Um, and now she's considering coming back in bikini. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. And then um uh Becca Sizemar. So Becca is a judge. Um yeah. she does she does scorekeeping, all that kind of stuff. So she was yeah. also in that show too. So it's pretty wild when you start thinking about it. Yeah. And how wild. all of you have branched out with the yeah. industry to different things and, and different um categories and things like that. That's that's so cool. Absolutely. When did you start getting involved with like the glam and the suits? Like how did that all come about? it just kind of naturally evolved. Like, okay. Again, when you, back when, when I first started, there weren't tanning companies at shows. There weren't wow. makeup artists at shows. Like there was barely, there wasn't even suit designers. I, when I did figure, my first figure suit was made by a woman who does ice skating d- costumes. So there wasn't even suit designers back then. You know what wow. I mean? So, Get a search for it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I was doing it all myself. I mean, my my background is in music. And so I was in music theater. Um, you know, I was in my first, I was a lead in an opera when I was 19. So I've been around for a minute with the, with the performing and all that kind of stuff too. So I knew how to do stage makeup. I knew how to do all that kind of stuff for myself. So gotcha. I started doing it for myself. And other girls were like, can you help me? And I was like, sure. You know, and, and that's how it evolved. That's how it came from, from that. It really wasn't something I planned. Um, and then... So, so yeah, so I started in figure and then I went and switched to bikini the following year because I, I knew I wasn't big enough for figure like at the next level. I was doing, I was doing well at the local level. I was, I was always top three at the local level, but I knew I wasn't big enough to go up. Yeah. So I went to bikini 
And then I tried bikini for a while and I was too big for bikini. So it was like, I didn't, back then the structure was like the thin pageant girl kind of look for bikini. And I'm, that's okay. not me. That's just yeah. not me. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't fit that look. So again, I did, I did well at the local level, but I would go to nationals and get crushed every single time. Cause I was just a bigger girl. Okay. Um, so, you know, my feedback was that I needed to either stay in bikini and run the local circuit and just do that. Or I needed to take time off and grow and come back and do figure. So that's what I did. I, I grew and I did figure. And again, I, I did, I always did well at the local level always. And then I would go to the national level and get crushed. <laughs> It just, just like, was, weird. it just was, it just was, it was, and like, you know, and, and so finally I got to the point where I was like, you know, I, I did pretty decent at the local level. And then I went, um, and they were like, you know, you're still just mainly my legs. They're like, your legs aren't big enough for national level yet. Uh, they're like, you just need to, to not compete for a while. So that's what I did. I stayed off stage. I did a, a good off season. Um, I came back and I did a local show and I got my worst placing I've ever gotten in my life. <laughs> fantastic because I was signed up to do uh NPC universe in two weeks after that show and I was like oh boy because I just did terrible <laughs> so wonderful um but I did Garden State and I did that on purpose as Jersey and I did that on purpose I knew it was gonna be the same judging panel for for universe because I wanted to get feedback so they were like well you know now that we know that you're doing universe you just look like you were two weeks out that's what you look like you look like you were too soft you need to diet a little bit more and I was like okay plus you know when you're at the local level you've got there was three high classes versus going up to universe at that oh, wow. point. It was six high classes at that point. Okay. So I knew I was going to be up against um, other women that were my size. You know, when you're at the local level, again, you got to remember I'm five nine. So yeah, I'm taller than everybody on stage. Um, so I went into universe the following week, the following two weeks later. Um, and I got called out first It's stuck in the middle and I never moved. <laughs> and I was like, Holy shit. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Because Finally. Until, I know. Because up until that point, I had never been in first call out at the national level. Wow. And, you know, I had been off the national level for almost two years at that point. I hadn't gone to the national level in almost two years at that point. And wow. so I was shocked. I was beyond shocked. I was like, what just happened? Like, it was, I, I can still to this day remember it felt like a dream. And then also back then, universe, it was Team Universe back then. That was the last year was Team Universe. Now it's NPC Universe. So back then it was a two-day show. So oh. um, and, yeah, right. <laughs> so top two when they're pro cards. And since I was split center in the in the middle of my class, I pretty much knew I was going to be walking away with a pro card, but still you've got that 24 hours in between where everybody's like, you're gonna win, you're gonna win, you're gonna win. I'm like, no, I haven't won it yet. Like bro chill like until they actually announced my name i didn't win shit <laughs> like, wait so you're one of those girls that posted you turned pro before you actually right. exactly but yeah I, I was like Smart. stop <laughs> yeah so Smart. like i literally just locked myself in the room and i was just like i am not i'm like i'm not talking to anybody i'm not doing anything i am just focusing on me and being here because this could potentially be the final day that i'm actually an amateur athlete and it ended up being that that was the case. So, um, so then I, you know, won my pro card and figure. I didn't um, know that. Yeah. That's brand new to brand new to me. Wow. Yep. So, Please. yep. So I won my pro card and figure. And actually, the girl that took second to me, Diana Schnault, is still competing as well, but she's competing in women's physique. So, okay. after the following year, I went back and. I did two pro shows in figure and I realized I wasn't big enough and I didn't want to be big enough. Again, remember I'm, I'm still taller than everybody else on stage, which means I have to carry a lot more mass and the amount of mass that I would have had to carry would have been ridiculous. And I just, just didn't want to do it. So that's when I switched to bikini on the pro level. And even, even in bikini, I still have to add a lot of size because again, my legs are 62% of my body. I measured. <laughs> that's, and, and that's a lot. It is. It is. What's five pounds on me looks like nothing to you. You have to gain That's 10 right. to see That's that right. single amount. That's right. You know, it's, it's a blessing and a curse because I can go into the off season and not, and I can gain weight and people don't even realize it. Um, but it's a curse because it takes a whole hell of a lot more to be able to fill myself out. So, you know, it, it's been a journey on the pro stage and like I've gotten to the point where I got into first call out one time. So, <laughs> you know, it just is what it is. And my, my goal now is always just to be better than the last time I was on stage. So, you know, are there dreams of Olympia and stuff? Of course, there's always stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, I've, I've found an internal 
um, goal and, and search for meaning in this sport and not just on stage, but off stage as well with the work that I do and everything like that. So um, before I go into all of that, so tell me a little bit more about, about your journey and what brought you to the sport in the first place. Yeah, so my journey is a little bit different. I had no clue about this sport, literally zero. And I think that that still shocks people to this day. Like when I tell people like I knew nothing about this sport up until three years ago, like nothing. Yeah. Um, so uh, my husband and I, Drew, met in the exercise science program at University of South Florida. And we also had a best friend at the time. Um, I'm not going to name them, but they, they became my first coach. And okay. He was fantastic. Um, he was like, hey, like, I really think that you should do a bodybuilding show. I want to become a bodybuilding coach. You would be great at it. And I kind of want to kind of, you know, take you under my wing and see what we can do. And I kept saying, no, 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 I can't do the diet. I can't do the diet. And all of a sudden, one day after he just kept pressing me on it, I was like, fine. I'll do it. And I'm just so the type of person that like I'm all in or I'm all out. Yeah. So once I said mm -hmm. yes, that light switch was on. And I was so proud of myself. You know, I'm seeing myself lean for the first time and I followed my plan to a T. He was hard. He was hard yeah. on me. I mean, meal plans and, you know, this food and whatever. Um, so I stepped on stage for the first time at the uh, the Clash. So that's why, that you know, Joe, Joe Pishkula mm -hmm. and the Clash series means so much to me. That yeah. show made me feel just amazing. You know, he really does take care of his athletes. But really what made me want to continue was we did end up going to nationals that year in 2019. And I shared that with you guys on the last um, overview of shows we did because Ari yeah. was the overall yeah, winner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I remember her, obviously, because I was like, wow, that's so great. And I was watching her. And But what, what was profound for me was I was not supposed to be there, obviously. But again, I had no clue. But yeah. Joe came, was backstage and he was around and he came up and said hi to me and that he was happy to see me there. And he remembered me and yeah. like, wow, that's so cool. You know? Yep. So this was the end of 2019. We decide that we're going into a little off season. We start prep and then COVID hits. <laughs> so all the shows are getting canceled and things like that. Um, and then we um, decided that we were going to do the first show of the season, which was the Tampa pro um, wasn't supposed to be at that show. It was a very last second decision. My coach who was still the, the one that I'm speaking with my first coach at the time called me. He was like, Hey, what do you think about doing Tampa pro in a couple of weeks? So I was like, sure. Why not? Let's, let's yeah. do it. So we really pushed. We ended up taking the overall win and I was shocked. Yeah. Um, I still say to this day that it, all the girls in that overall lineup won their pro card that year. Except yeah. For me, mm -hmm. I was the except only for one you. that didn't. I was because well, only... I, I had a girl in that lineup, Shanika. Yep. Yep. And, they and all she won got... her pro card. Yep. yep. They all got their pro card except for me. So at the end of 2020, we went through the national circuit and I just kept getting worse and worse. Um, mm -hmm. I was really sucked down. You know, my coach at the time did not understand the importance of feedback. And remember, we're both growing in this sport together. Yeah. So I can't yeah. fault him for that at that time. But I kept saying, like, should we go get feedback? And the response was, well, I like you, your look like this. So this is what we're bringing. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, all right, well, that's not, you're, you're not the one giving away the pro right. card. So we got to right. figure out what they want. Right. Um, so at the end of 2020, I did make a coaching switch and that's when I joined Jamie Day Bernard. And, um, we went into a very long off season. She wanted me to get my period back and we're focused on health. And she said to me, we're going to take a long off season. And when we come back, we're going for the pro card, but we're not only going for the pro card. I want you to be competitive on the pro level. Yeah. She's like, I hate when girls get their pro card. And then I just got to shut them right down and go back into an off season. Mm -hmm. So we did that. I took 16 months off and I was supporting all my friends and I was still showing up to shows and I was still studying and I was hanging out with the Fit Body Fusion crew. And then uh, we decided to, decided to prep um, at the beginning of last year, 2022. Right away, um, at the beginning of the year, my grandfather passed away from a brain tumor. Mm. So the the beginning of that prep was was terrible, but it mm. almost gave me a little bit more drive and motivation of like this is what he would want for me. He was right. so invested in me competing. He always asked about my traveling, and so I knew I had to pick up myself up and finish the job. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we're a couple weeks out at this point from girl power. I was not supposed to be there, but I did a check-in and I was like, 
I kind of feel myself. I kind of just want to get on the <laughs> Yeah. So I sent it to Jamie and I was like, what do you think? Like, I kind of want to just jump into girl power. It's right in my backyard. There's no expectations. I literally do not care if I get in last place. I just want to go. I just want to knock mm-hmm. the cobwebs off. And I want to do this for my grandpa. She's like, oh, you know, Jamie's so cool. She's usually throws people into shows all the time. She's like, cool. Yeah. We're all in. Let's go. So we ended up showing up and um, we won my class, which I was shocked. Mm-hmm. And then we were one point away in the overall. So I was really happy about that. And the feedback from Sandy was, I think you should be a junior at USA's in two weeks. And that was not the plan either. And yeah. I was like, okay, well, if Sandy says, let's let's go. I ended up coming home from that trip and I got a email from my makeup artist that she had COVID. And then that night I got COVID. Oh no. So I called Jamie and she's like, all right, well, let's do this. Let's just rest and let's see what happens. And it was really weird. I would wake up in the morning. I would go in the garage and do my 60 minutes of cardio. And I was still dropping weight every day. Mm-hmm. I was just dropping. I wasn't training. The only thing that I would commit to is 60 minutes of cardio. And then I had to get my butt back in bed. Yeah. And I tightened up about 10 pounds that week. I, we didn't wow. adjust anything. It was just pulling off inflammation at that point. Yeah. So I get over COVID. I test negative three days before the show. We're going. We're all in. We're going. Um, then at um, Junior USAs, you have to win your class, but you don't yeah. get your pro card at that point. You have still have to get top four yep. in the overall. overall. Mm-hmm. So I had seven in my class. So I was dead center. So I, yeah. I kind of knew, unless things they were doing something crazy, that I won the class. But I knew that the job wasn't finished yet. Um, and then we go into the overall and I got my pro card that day. And yeah. it was a little bit different that friend than from you, because I was so at peace that day. And people yeah. talk about that, like when they know that they've done everything they could and they yep. feel really confident that the day they win their pro card, they're just kind of at peace with it. And that's yeah. where I was at. Cause I was at peace, it not happening. Cause I wasn't supposed to be there anyway. And I was really at peace with it happening. Yeah. Um, so it was awesome. And then obviously, you know, we jump right on the pro stage right away. Um, we ended up doing a few shows and then I did end up getting my early qualification for 2022 Olympia, which was shocking Yeah, <laughs> um, in, the, in the best way. Um, but at that point I was really burnt out. I, I yeah. almost quit two shows before that. And then I kept pressing. So I'm really excited this year to bring a fresh new look to the Olympia and have a little bit of time off in between the Olympia and whatnot. So it's going to be a completely different year this year, but 2022, that, that's what that that's for. Oh, okay. 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 That's Very nice. Just, I like it. It's just my year, you know, it was your year. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Like I, I, it's funny because you say, I didn't know anything about the sport when I got into it. I didn't know anything about the sport when I got into it. I don't think a lot of people do, you know, like, I started, so the reason why I started in the first place was because everybody told me I should compete. I didn't even know what that meant, but I just <laughs> right. did, they were like, they, you just have the structure. Cause I have the, I have the, I have the broad shoulders. Cause I have, yep. I have the swimmer, all that kind of stuff. So I have the broad shoulders and they're like, the you, back. Should compete, you should do figure. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, I don't even know what that is. What is figure? What is that? You sure, know? <laughs> no. So no, my husband and I were dating at the time and I had come from the entertainment world, you know, like modeling and stuff like that. So like I was going out on dates with him and eating more (laughs) and I was gaining weight and I was like, I don't like this. (laughs) So I was like, I need a goal. I was like, I need a goal. I need something. I need something to keep me like straight and narrow. So that's why I started prepping in the first place. I was like, sure, let's do it. Let's do a show. That was back when bodybuilding.com was where you found all your information. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And like Aaron Stern was on there. I followed Aaron Stern religiously. I loved Aaron Stern. She was my favorite. Wow. And I was like, I want to, and you know, we have a similar structure too, or similar height, all that kind of stuff. I, like, I want to be like her. That's what I want. So she was on my vision board, all that kind of stuff. Wow. And uh, so I ended up hiring this chick off of bodybuilding.com who just looks like a competitor. And she was, she was a coach and a competitor in a diff- different federation and everything like that. Prepped for six weeks. <laughs> Did my first show. It was six, six weeks. Yeah. I was it brutal? What I was doing. Was it no, because I, I was so used to, listen, I was so used to modeling and stuff and I was so used to starving myself. Suffering. Yes. I had no problem with the diet. The diet right. has never been a problem. That was for probably me. a surplus for you compared to modeling. Yeah, it was. And I was just like, I was, that, that part was never a problem. It's never been a problem. The diet's never been a problem. One part, the one part I don't like is the cardio. That's the one part I don't like. Okay. So okay. 
you know, even back then, back then I didn't mind them cardio because I used to be a cardio bunny. You know what I mean? Like I lifted a little bit, but I didn't really know what I was doing. Yeah. You know, I'd worked in gyms my whole life. My first job was I was a lifeguard in a gym. You know what I mean? So oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, that was my first job. I was a babysitter was my first job. But when I was in, co- <laughs> when I was in college, I was a lifeguard in the gym. Your like real job. job. Yeah. Yeah. So I was a lifeguard. Um, <clears throat> I managed a gym. I've done all that, all the gym stuff, you know okay. what I mean? But I just never, I'd never gone into, into depth with it. Right. I, I yeah. was like, I just, I just kind of went in and just half, just whatever I felt like lifting up that day. I lifted up that day. You know what I mean? It Didn't know if like, it was, it was right. Structured. If it looked good, you're like, whatever. <laughs> no, it was structured. Uh, and, uh, you know, and I lived in Vegas for a while too. And I can remember, cause that was, again, I would go to the gym all the time, but I would go on the, on the elliptical for like three hours. Like that's what I did. And, wow. But that was, you know, the, they would host the Olympia in Vegas. And that was before I did all this stuff. And I didn't know what any of this stuff was. And all the big freaking bodybuilder dudes would come into Vegas. And, like, the whole gym would be like, shh, that's so-and-so. Shh, that's so-and-so. I'm like, who? Well, <laughs> what? They're what on my this? machine. They're just, I need to ask they're just to big. They're just big dudes that need to move. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, I don't know what this is. Exactly. So <laughs> it's just like always funny to me because like you know and, and you know the people that i hung out with and stuff in vegas they were into it because they were the ones that, that told me i should compete but i had no clue what it was i had no clue what, what that even meant so they were all like oh my god it's so and so oh it's so and so and i'm like i don't know that person and are you putting together at the time that competing means these guys are competing or are you not putting really together? okay not really i mean i i the only the only thing that i knew about bodybuilding at all was arnold schwarzenegger that's the only thing i knew i i and what's the reach at this point? Like, how are people knowing these people? Like, there, is there social media at this point? Like, that's prevalent. Like, how do people know these are bodybuilders? No, I think it's just fans themselves. Like, so, okay. okay so I worked as a showgirl at the Rio. So okay. I worked with Chippendales. <laughs> so, <What? laughs> so a lot of those guys, you know, obviously they're big muscular guys, follow bodybuilders, Got right? It. Got so it. that's where the connection was. I was friends with all these dudes and I, they, they all knew who these big bodybuilders were. And I had no, I had no clue. I was like, I don't know. They look good. That's all I know. Right. You see <laughs> like, men all the time at this point. You're right. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, I don't know. They just look bigger. <laughs> that's all I know. So, but yeah, it's just funny how things just kind of come full circle like that, you know, and now we go back to Vegas for the Olympia and stuff. Of course it's in Orlando this year, but you know, I go back to Vegas all the time and a bunch of my friends still live there and everything like that too. So from when I live there, I hate Vegas now. I don't know how I did that. Now that I look back at it, I hate it. <laughs> it's like, what, I'm so, so my favorite. no, I'm so glad that they, that it's going back to Orlando. I'm just not a, I'm, I'm just not a smoke and casinos and just the COVID. Sc- so right? Bad. Scum of so the earth. Bad here. <laughs> You're I, I got people sick. smoking and yeah. touching the buttons. And I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah. here for a bodybuilding show. I'm trying to stay healthy. <laughs> I know. Did you get sick after the Olympia? Olympia? I, got, like- I got sick the morning of the Olympia. Oh. I woke up and I was like, this isn't good. <laughs> yeah. I think everybody got sick at the meet and greet last year. That makes sense. It was I really started good. to feel it the, on Sunday. I started to feel it on Sunday. Like I stayed through Sunday because I was going to, I wanted to go like, on the strip and like walk around and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but Sunday afternoon, I just started feeling it. I was like, I can't even, I can't move. I went back to, so Devin, um, one of my, one of my cuties, you know, I went back to her room and I literally passed out for hours because I just couldn't, I was like, I don't know what's going on. It wasn't COVID at that point. I think I had the flu at that okay. point. I think that's what I got. And then once I got home, because when I got home, I went, I tested and I didn't, I, I tested negative for COVID. So, um, I started feeling better. And then I went back to the gym too soon, I think. And I think at that point, that's when I caught COVID because I go, I went to COVID the day or I went to the emergency room the day after Christmas. Oh my God. Um, it was that bad. I had, a, I had a headache so bad. I couldn't sit up. Like it was terrible. I've never wow. had a headache like that in my life. So I went to the emergency room the day after Christmas and that's when I got the testing and it was COVID and all of that. So I think it just morphed into that. Um, so then I was like, you know, again, that as you know, my big event is in January every year. So I was like, this sucks. I'm like, gotta get I, better. Gotta I'm get like, I have to get better right, right now. Like right yeah. now I gotta get better. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. I was like, I, I just, I canceled my New Year's Eve plans. I canceled everything just so that I could stay oh, home no. and just, and just, re- just do what I had to do. But, um, but the silver lining of that, so this is actually a pretty cool story. So the silver lining of that is that 
we're 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 kind of conspiracy theorists a little bit. I think everybody is at this point. If you everybody, don't believe in, is. yeah. If you don't believe in some conspiracy theories at some point, you know, whatever. So you, you're just just blind at this point, right? So um, or so, living in your own world, which is okay too, I guess. <laughs> right. So we have a ongoing. We have a regular prescription for um, ivermectin. So oh, yeah, you we're telling me about this. It's yes. Yes. Okay. So when I got COVID, I went onto a protocol of ivermectin, um, and it's a it's an anti parasite parasite thing. Um, it helps to to just make you better faster. They they um, they take it regularly in like Africa and things like that to prevent against like waterborne born Ill illnesses and things like that. <clears throat> so you can use it as a prophylactic as a as a preventative, and then you can also use it once you've got COVID to help you get through it, so you don't end up getting wow. like the symptoms of long COVID and stuff like that. So I went on ivermectin for about a month um, when I got COVID, and when I got through that whole protocol, all of a sudden my body started responding like nobody's business. Wow. Like I don't, and that's the only thing that I can point back to that I did differently is that I took the ivermectin. Yep. yep. And I'm like, I'm just wondering if I had a parasite or something like that, you know, in my gut, maybe an imbalance in my system or something. And the ivermectin killed it. Killed it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the nutrient absorption is just like, okay, we can go right into it now. Yep. And you just didn't know, but you wouldn't have known unless you got COVID. Correct. Maybe it was just and supposed to happen. My body has responded so well this year in comparison, even comparison to the year before. Like that's I made crazy. huge gains last year, but this year has been ridiculous. Like I that's just crazy. And that's the only change. That's the wow. only change. So well, I'm just so wondering just if my body wasn't eating once it. Once a month <laughs> yeah. or once, once a well, year. Well, no, actually, whenever I go to events and stuff like that now, I take ivermectin because, it, again, like you a can use it. Yes, you can use a prophylactic and a preventative. So I take it when I go to shows um, just so that I don't get don't get sick again. It's really um, smart. Yeah, my, my husband makes me. <laughs> I don't like Truth be told, he makes me yeah. take it, which is it's like totally it. fine. Like I, 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 I haven't gotten six cents. Knock on, knock on some wood. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> like I haven't gotten six cents, and I'm going to shows every weekend. You know what I mean? But people it's are crowd. really sick right now. It's going around again. Yep, yep. I mean, I went to the Arnold. I didn't get sick of the Arnold. You know, um, all wild. of that kind of stuff. So happy I mean, accident, right? Exactly. So hey, you know what? I don't know if it's exactly what happened, but I'm not going to argue with it, right? Not so. at all. It happened, and we're gonna we're gonna stick to that story. Yep. <laughs> yep. So so with that, so now you know we're in this whole scenario of the reason why we wanted to do this podcast is we obviously have some history in the sport, um, but we also work with competitors and things like that too. So we wanted to bring inf information that can be educational as well. Um, things that can be helpful. So um, for those of you that are that are watching this and listening to this, that are competitors or want to be competitors, things that you can that you can take and apply to your own preps and your own off seasons and things like that. Um, like for example, what's going on right now? Uh, what we what we're both dealing with right now is North Americans. Um, you know, I'll be up there. I'm just going up on Friday. Um, I know you're stuck in Florida because of the because of the hurricane. The hurricane um, yes. Yeah. Do you have, do you have any com uh, do you have any competitors that are actually competing in North Americans this weekend? Yes. So I have an, a bikini girl, Holly Jones, on okay. Saturday, and okay. then Drew. Drew, my husband Drew, is also coach for Fit Body Fusion. We always say that when you get one, you get us both. So we have yeah. Corey, who's in men's physique today. Okay. He's splitting two of his classes, and then he's looking like third or fourth in one of them. So hopefully a pro card for one of those. Nice. And then he's got a figure girl, Marie Butler. So okay. she competes on Friday. Friday. She's yeah, a really Friday. Yeah, she's got a really good shot too. So we're really, really, really excited. I wish I could be there, but it just doesn't make sense at this point with the storm and and whatnot. Yeah. So thank God my hubby's there and he's taking care of it, all of all of our yeah. people for us. Well, and you guys, you guys own a gym and everything too. So you were saying, is it you said there's just a tree down for your gym? Yeah. So we have no, we had no damage at the house. Thank God. Um, it was a little bit crazy on Monday because so Sunday we over the weekend we were in Charleston at the clash. Right. And the, plan was that he flew from Charleston to Pittsburgh and I drove the car back to Florida and then I was going to fly out and meet him on Tuesday. I was coming home to get my hair done. <laughs> well, when I'm in the chair on Monday getting my hair done, it's, you know, this flight's getting canceled and this storm's coming in and blah, blah, blah. And I have a pool with a lot of pool furniture outside and uh, my, my husband's calling me. He's like, honey, what are you going to do? How are we going to get this in? And it was so cool because so many of my friends knew that I was home alone and they all reached out to me. So I had three people come over. By the time I got home from my hair, my whole house was 
was taken care of. I didn't have to do oh. anything. My friends are so great. I'm so grateful for them. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And then I pulled up to the gym this morning and there was just a big tree down, but it didn't touch the building, no flooding, no anything. That So everybody's fine. Thank God. Nice. But um, the airports are still closed and, and things like that. So it just like, it, it doesn't make sense for me to be like, do I catch a flight on this day? Yeah. Hopefully I'll get back. I just want to be home and make sure everyone's, you know, good. Well, you know, in reality too, like at the end of the day, competitors should be able to take care of themselves. Sure. Yes. And with technology the way that it is today too, I mean, you can check in through FaceTime and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's what yeah. I do. You know, as you know, I don't coach. I, I do I do posing coaching. Yeah. So if I'm not at, at one of my clients' shows and stuff like that, then um, then I just have them FaceTime me or they can send me videos or whatever. You can do just as much stuff that way. Um, Absolutely. You know, you've got, you've got representatives there at North Americans too. Like when I, for example, when I did New York Pro, that was great. Last year I did New York Pro. Jamie's my coach. Um, she was not there in person. She was at another show that weekend, but Jordan was there. So Jordan would come and she would check, check me in person with Jamie on FaceTime and Jamie would be like, Hey, can you tell me, is this what I'm seeing or whatever? Like, is this actually happening in real life kind of thing yes. versus am I just seeing this on FaceTime and stuff? So, you know, it's, it's helpful to have a network of people that you can rely on with that kind of thing too. Yes. Um, I've even done that with some of my girls with like their makeup and stuff too. Like sometimes I can't tell through pictures they take or whatever because of the lighting and th things like that. I'm like, yeah. can you, I'm like, can you go into some different light or can you get somebody to, to, to video for me or something? I'm like, just so that I can see that, that your makeup's okay. Right. Yes. You know, just stupid little things like that, but they make a difference. You know, it does make a difference at the end of the day. One of um, Jamie's athletes, an amateur went on FaceTime to check in with her. She was not there at the show, but I was. Yeah. She something's off with your makeup. Can you go down in Jordan's room and have her look at it? So Jamie calls me and tells me, you know, Hey, I want you to look at her makeup. She comes right down. And I'm like, Oh, yep. I see it. But Jamie yeah. couldn't quite see what it was yep. through FaceTime. So it is, it's so nice to have some support system that's there in person. I will say too, you have to really know the athletes sometimes in person, because sometimes when you, when you see them on, you know, FaceTime, you see them on FaceTime all the time. And then you see them in person, they either look like 10% better or 10% yeah. worse. worse. So then you yeah. kind of know that person of like, okay, on FaceTime, they look this way, but I know that they kind of look this way. So yep. that's the only caveat to the FaceTime. Um, most shows I'm at in person, but I, most of my athletes that are on national stage at this point, I should have dialed in and yes. know their body very well as a coach. If not, then there's other issues. But right. So I'm super excited. I'm super excited for all of our athletes that are on stage this weekend. They look really great. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be up there. Hey, and if you need any help, I'll be up there. I was, I, say, I was just going to say, gonna reach out. <laughs> yep. I'm there, I'm there on Friday uh, till Sunday. Perfect. Um, it's a drive for me. So it's like any, depending on traffic, anywhere from three and a half, four and a half hours for a drive. Oh, so for you, that's yeah. nothing. That's yeah. nothing. Um, I'm that I'll drive, I'll drive up to six hours after the six hour mark. Then I fly. Um, it used to be, you know, a few years back I would do eight. I've done 12 hours. Like I used to drive to Chicago and stuff like that. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> you know, it's funny about our bigger athlete. So her flight got canceled too. She lives in Florida. She drove yesterday. 15 yeah, wow. hours and they left at like noon. So she didn't get into the middle. Yeah. She didn't get into the middle of the night last night. So, you know, but this is what athletes do. You're yeah. always prepared. You're in, yep. she, that's what she did. She, she knew her flight got canceled. She's not missing it. Packed right. her food, blah, blah, blah. Got on the road a couple days early and now she's there. So well, there was a hurricane last year too. Um, I had one of the girls that I worked with from up here, drive down to Florida because she was doing the Daytona. It was like a Daytona, like masters pro or something. Wow. So she drove down there. And then when she got down there, everything was so underwater, like the, the Airbnb that she had rented that she couldn't get into. So they had to find a new one. And like, they were like wait, wading through the streets and everything, but she got there and she competed. She, she made it happen. You know? Unreal. Unreal. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we do, we deal with these things. You just, you just up and you do it. <laughs> if, if you love it that much. And if you put that hard work into prep, nothing is yeah. stopping you from putting right. your heel on that stage. Like that's right. You, you did a 12 to 18 week long prep. You're going to figure out how to get there. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it, it is what it is. It's like, you, at that point you go into survival mode almost. It's like, okay, what do I got to do to make this work? That's it. Really? You know? Yeah. So and we always figure it out. <laughs> we always figure it out one way or another. It gets figured out. Um, I always tell people if you're going to be traveling, just make sure you have your suit and your, your heels with you and your carry on bag. Yeah. Every, everything else can be replaced. Those yes. things can't. Yeah. Um, even sometimes your heels can be replaced sometimes, not all Depending the time. Depending on who's at the show. 
That's yeah. right. I had one of my girls, she put her, her heels in her bag and it was so hot that the, the, the glue from the shoes like came undone. So the shoe like fell apart inside, oh, inside her bag. No. Yeah. yeah. So wow. it was for, it was for North Americans, I think two years ago, I think it was pre pretty sure it was North Americans. Um, and she got there and one of the vendors happened to have shoes and they happened to have her, her size. size. Wow. So she, she had shoes. So she was very thankful. Cause I was like, I don't know how you're going to glue the shoe back together. No. <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's one, one thing, thing I don't know how to fix. <laughs> I don't mess with that. I'm like you, like I'm so neurotic. Like if I'm traveling to the show, my carry on has everything that I need yep. for stage jewelry, my yep. suit, my heels, everything yep. else you can find and replace. But right. those things make sure that you have them in your bag, your food with you. I know some people pack their food in their carry on to like, add more but that just like you're saying the temperature underneath the plane is yes. so hot so i've also heard of girls food going spoiled mm -hmm. and then they eat it anyway and then they get sick, they get sick. Yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. i would just have everything you need in your bag with you that way you take nothing to chance so i do like a combo of that this actually happened to me too i lot my bags went I, I competed in the puerto rico pro yeah I went, I went to puerto rico my bags went to newark new jersey <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Um, so I had I had my suit and I had my um, heels and I had my jewelry and my carry on and I had some of my food like for the day I had my food okay. and my carry on. Um, the rest of my food was in my check bags. Um, so when I got to Puerto Rico, I was there a day to I, I try to get in as early as I can. I was there I think on Thursday and I wasn't competing until Saturday, so I had plenty of time. Funny. So I went to the drugstore, got all my makeup and stuff that I would need from the drugstore. Um, Your makeup, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I had to go get makeup. Um, I had no clothes. So I went to one of those like little, like, like touristy shops and I bought like everything that said Puerto Rico on it, like the tank tops and the, the shorts and everything. The tie dye. I, I looked so much like a tourist. It was ridiculous, but I had clothes. It is what it is. Clean underwear. Uh, That's good. Yep. <laughs> I went to the grocery store. I got almost everything except I couldn't get like cooked meat. From the grocery store, from the grocery store, the, the the hotel itself had some things, but they didn't have fish. Of all things, in Puerto Rico, they didn't have fish. That's so <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So I went and I went found this little uh, mom and pop like restaurant, and they cooked fish for me, right? And they're like, like <laughs> they're trying to give me beans and rice and all this stuff. I was like, no, I don't. Just 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 the fish. Just the just, fish. Just buy it. So it was like they were like trying to take care of me, like I was starving or something. I'm like, no, no, no. It's, I just need the fish. It's okay. Just I'm gonna be fish. your I'll easiest customer yeah. all day. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, like it was, and my my bag showed up the next day, so I was fine at the end of the day. But I, you know, I spent that that first day just getting all the stuff that I needed. You gotta but do it that in case. You gotta yeah, and it was honestly one of the best shows I've ever done because I was just went around the whole the whole island and like freaking met. The, met the locals and all that stuff. I had so much fun. I was like, I don't really mind this. You know, it was a good time. It was wow. a good time. <laughs> you got to post a picture of you in that outfit. I know, right? I Did still have, I still have, yeah, I still have, I have the tank top. I have the, the shorts. I had a little, like one of those little sundress type things that you get like with the, you know, with the little, the little beads that hang yes. off it and stuff. Yeah. I had one of those. Oh yeah. I, How I was your I, tanning I, cover yep. up? <laughs> I absolutely looked like a tourist. 100%. <laughs> At that it was fun. Stayed at the uh, Caribe, right? Gosh, this was so. This was before they had all the hurricanes and stuff down there. So okay. it was it was a Tim Gardner show. It was it was his show. I can't okay. remember. Two thousand. My brother in law got married at the Caribe in Puerto Rico, okay. and last year I know the show was at that hotel. That's a beautiful hotel. I cannot remember what the name okay. of it was. I, I can't remember if it was the same venue or if it was a different venue. Um, I think that was in twenty sixteen. Was that twenty sixteen? Oh, wow. Okay. It was a while. It was a long time ago. Okay. Um, yeah. This was the last year's show I was talking about. Yeah, it was definitely not. It was, I, and I, 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 I know they've switched venues a couple of times, like I said, because of the hurricane and stuff like that. I know they've had to switch a few things. So I don't think it was the same venue. Um, okay. Uh, and like I said, I'm pretty sure that was 2016. I'm trying to remember. Like, like a Puerto Rico though. Isn't it beautiful? Oh my God. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. I just loved it. So, and just like you were saying, the people are so great. Yep. So yeah. That was honestly one of my favorite shows that I've done just, just because of the actual atmosphere and the vibe yes. of it myself itself. It was actually a lot of fun. I enjoyed that yeah. show a lot. I love Puerto Rico. Um, yeah, it was beautiful. So, and I haven't been down there since I've always said I wanted to go back, but then they ended up canceling it because of the hurricane and the then hurricane. They, they'd move stuff around and all that kind of thing. So it's just, I just haven't gone back. Yeah. It hasn't lined up, but I would love to go back to that show again.
bucket list um, for a couple of years or right yeah exactly so um so yeah so we've got north americans coming up this weekend um i have a handful of girls competing in the um the masters world on sunday too yeah so, i know a lot of people are staying for that which i'm super excited about i have yeah. no clients at the moment that are staying for that but i know a lot of people were going for that show which i was surprised about it with it being yep. on sunday and whatnot but yep. it's supposedly going to be a really good event. So I'm yeah, it looks like it. I mean, they, they, they do that every year. Um, depending on the, the, the way that the show is structured, it's always right after all the, the, I the love North Americans or actually masters nationals. I think, I think they moved it to North Americans this year. It was masters nationals before. And then that would, would make the sense. following year. Or five, okay. Um, but if the girls win their pro card, uh, in masters the day before they can enter masters worlds the following day. So, That's um, so cool. last year I had, I had a girl that did that. Um, I think, I think the year before I had a girl that did that too. Every year I have, um, I have like one girl that will win and then decide to do it the next day. Yeah. Kareen did it last year. Um, oh, I remember cool. she did it last year. Okay. Um, Yayoi, I don't think you've met Yayoi. She did it the year before. Um, okay. she's all, she also has come to Cutie's Conquer the stage, but she didn't come this past year. Okay. Um, so yeah, the last few years I've had a few girls that have done that. So it's pretty cool. They, they win their pro card one day, pro debut the next. <laughs> and that's like what Sandy's doing at, uh, not North American, sorry, Junior Nats next year. Did you oh, really? That? No. Yeah. So, th so she's going to have Junior Nats on Saturday and then a pro show on Sunday. So, oh. the, so the girls that turn pro, they can just go right into a pro stage and then pros that are there. Like, it's great for me. Cause if I'm already, you know, yeah, for or if I'm already lean and coaching there that weekend, then I can right. just do a show. And yeah, so I'm, I thought that was really cool and super exciting for Sandy and, you know, a new little thing for them. So yeah, that's going to happen. That's actually a really good idea. They should do more stuff like that. You know, I think so too. I think yeah. so too. You're already there and just yep. like you're saying, you know, what's another yep. day of makeup and hair and things like that. You know, I know right. nobody likes two day shows, but it's kind of different, right? You just want your pro cards. So it's yeah. Really a different expectation and funness to it. Um, no, absolutely. I like that. I, 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 no, really I, was, I was even saying that with the Masters Olympia, they should tie that into the main Olympia. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I know it'd be hard because they already have the Olympia amateur. But if they did like, I don't know, if they did Masters Olympia, like the, I don't know, either before or after the main Olympia, you know what I mean? And then um, have the amateur, keep the amateur where it is. Maybe do yeah. the same thing. You know, you keep the amateur where it is. You do the Olympia, then you do the Masters Olympia. I mean, I feel like that would make, make a lot of sense. I know? agree. I agree. I, I don't know why I, I'm sure there was, you know, a business side to it, but Romania is obviously super far. Maybe they were trying to also, you know, some of the masters girls are in the open as well. Maybe not overwhelm them. I'm not sure, but yeah. I, I don't know. I would have loved to have it all in one spot too, because yeah. I know half of that lineup. They're all my friends and my girls. I would right. love to support them and be there, but absolutely none of us can go when it's in Romania, you know, that's so far. Correct. So obviously I supported by watching the live stream and texting them. Yep. Things like that, but I would love to see you know the more that this goes on. I know they're doing it every other year at this point for it to tie into the Olympia. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think that would be. I think that would be a smart. I think it just would be a smart move all the way around. Yeah. I think you get more fans. I think you get more um, ticket sales. I think you get more just everything better around yeah. it. You know what I mean? I agree. You know, and, and for the, for some or here and here's the thing: you can do the Masters Olympia prior to the Olympia because you win the, uh, the qualification and then you walk into the Olympia the next day, yeah. you know, for example, like you know, Jessica Wilson won the master's Olympia. She's already Olympia qualified, but say she wasn't, you know, right. so you win your master's Olympia and you win your Olympia qualification the following day you go and compete in the Olympia. That's a cool idea too. I like that. Yeah. I really like that. I just, I just came up with that on the spot. I really like it. I really like it. <laughs> Y'all, this is why we do these podcasts. <laughs> I know, right? For real. I got, I got, I got this, I got this, right? <laughs> We always knew you were good before, at business. Right? Before you know it, I'm like, we're going to be on their marketing team and all exactly. that stuff. Just doing this. <laughs> like, we got ideas. Bring the girls in. <laughs> Beyond the <laughs> Right? Yeah. For real. For real. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. So um, so with that, um, I think that kind of covers our current events. And then we go into September. Um, there's not a lot of shows going on in September as far as. I get a little break. Oh, I know. <laughs> Well, and I was thinking that I was like, typically, um, this is the case. Typically, there's not a lot of shows in September, but the Olympia is usually in September. Correct. So like, because my birthday is September. My birthday is September 20th. Happy birthday. So, you know, when, before we had all this COVID stuff, the Olympia was my birthday. Right. Right. So like, I used to turn it in a whole week. I would stay in Vegas for a week. 
um, you know, how we would always do it. I would go in for the Olympia. My husband would come in on Sunday and then we would stay till like Wednesday or Thursday and, and celebrate my birthday. We did make that it, every get year. a trip. Yeah. 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 So, um, so this year it's like the shows are all the same like that, except the Olympia is not in September. So we've got just a random week in the middle of there where there's, there's nothing there and there usually is. So, so what are you going to so yeah, do for your well, birthday? <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to Atlantic City, so kind of the East Coast version of Vegas. At the beginning of this, I'm talking about how I hate Vegas, and now we're going to Atlantic City, but whatever. You know? it's, it's not technically <laughs> Vegas. It's, it's not, it's, and it's on the it's beach. It's the same, but it's so different. It's different. Yes. It's, it's got, you know, it's got the boardwalk. Yeah. It's got all that kind of stuff there. Um, different. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a restaurant person. I am in prep, but as you know, I'm also on macros, so I can find things no matter where I go. Um, and then I'm also like a spa person. I like going to, yeah. to my spas. I like all that kind of stuff and just relax and just get away. Yeah. And you can do all that. And, That's the best and, part and about Atlantic casinos City. is you do have all that yes. in one spot. You have the it's food, correct. you have the relaxation, you have the slots yep. if you're into that. Sometimes good pools. Yep. So I get that kind of thing. Well, and that's, that's the thing too. It's still nice enough out that the pools will still be open. Yeah. So we can go to the pool. Um, and it's not a five hour flight. It's a two, two, three hour drive. You know what I mean? That's good so for you too totally when you're in different. prep because you could pack everything in the car that you need. Yes. That's, that's right. That's a game changer. That's right. So that's what my, because my husband was initially was like, we should go to Vegas. I was like, I don't want to fly. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go. I was like, can we do the same thing, but just like drive there? <laughs> so that's where Atlantic City came into play. You guys love fun. So that'll be nice. Say that again. Yeah, you guys love fun though. That will be nice. Yeah. 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 It'll be a nice little getaway. Um, we, we tend to do that a lot, but we haven't, we haven't really a lot this year because we've just, just been so busy. Plus we bought a house last year. So when you buy a house, nesting, there's so, many things, there's so many things to do. There's always something to be fixing. There's always something to be improving. Yeah. So that's what we've been doing for the last year and a half. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So you were there at Cuties. That's, that's the weekend that I actually closed on my house. So, oh, wow. Oh, that was, was that this year though? That was the year before. That was the year before. If, it was the year before. If so I've been here last yeah. year. Wow. You held that together yeah. very well. I wouldn't have known. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a fun time, fun time. Wow. Um, but yeah, so we haven't done a whole lot of traveling, um, since we moved in here. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we still do these little, these little mini vacations where we go for like two, three days kind of thing. That's so, perfect. It resets it your mind, yeah. resets your energy. Now, are you telling people how many weeks out you are or? Are you oh yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah, I'm uh so what am I? I'm just under 12. Just under okay. 12 weeks out. Right oh yeah, now. so you still have a so, good amount of time and yeah. So the last two shows of the year really. So there's um one the one weekend in November, uh it's um the Ben Weeder weekend. Yep. So there's like four or five pro shows that weekend. Okay. Um so I'm doing Hawaii that weekend. Fun. So fun. Yeah, I've done, I did Hawaii in 2017. Okay. And that's the one that's the one show where I got first call out. Okay. <laughs> I'm going Hold back. back. So, testing. Yes. <laughs> so, and, uh, and then Japan the following week. So I'm going, I'm, I'm like, if I'm going all the way up to Hawaii, I can just keep going and go to Japan. So, wow. um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do Japan. And then there's one more show in Taiwan after that, but my husband doesn't want me to go there because of all the craziness. I was just about to ask. So, so does your it. husband, is your husband going to go with you to the shows or do you travel no. solo? No, not on these. He has, he has come to them, but when we can turn them into vacations, like I was saying with, uh, with the Vegas thing and Olympia and stuff like that. But, um, if I'm going to be gone for two weeks, no, yeah. um, that just doesn't, doesn't make any sense. How do you do with like being by yourself and show weekend? Oh, I'm totally fine. I prefer to be by myself. Yes. I don't like people being around. Me neither. I don't like people around. Um, I have a hard time. Um, I need my space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah I, I, yeah I understand that completely and I think that yeah. that's something too with competitors is it's hard for girls that like want to be around people 24 7 because that helps their anxiety to see the other girls that are like I need to be in my space to focus yeah. and it's like well why is she so upset on show weekend it's not that she's upset she just needs that's her way it's of your space focusing that's right. and you know dealing that's with right. her anxiety so I think that's an important note too is like as a competitor it's okay for you to understand like what helps you on show day and if it's yeah. being around people find other people that like to be around people but if people decide to take a step back and kind of do their own thing 
that's okay too. That's what they need. That's yes. what they need in that moment. And I'm just like that in general. Yeah. Like I, when I, I, I'm, I always say I'm a, a introverted extrovert. That's what I like say. When I'm a, yes. Yeah. Yes. Like when I'm in a social situation, I'm the, I'm on yes. it, you know, but as soon as that, that energy has been spent, yep. I need, You're I need me time. Yep. I, I, I agree. Time. I recharge by myself. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. I, I I enjoy my my time alone. I enjoy being by myself. You know, that's one of the reasons why my husband and I get along as well as we do because he's the same way. Like he's you know he's great when he's in social social situations, but he would prefer to be home with our dogs. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know, love like that. it just is what it is. Yeah. Like there's there's some people that that are that need other people around. We don't. Yeah. Um, and that's what we say all the time too, as far as how we complement each other. Like we we have our own lives. Yeah. We, we enjoy our time together, but we enjoy our time apart yeah. as well, you know? And, and we also always say, as much as you love somebody, you may think that they're the most amazing person in the world, but you never want to be around somebody 24 no. seven. You just don't. <laughs> for, no, for my husband and I, it's so hard that we are involved in so many things together because together, it's like when you come yeah. home at night, you don't have that, like, how was your day? And let me throw up yeah. all over you with the, the things yeah. that happened. Cause we just l- experienced it all day. So it is really hard to kind of shut that off or not have that kind of communication. Um, mm-hmm. But there's also benefits to it too, but I totally understand Absolutely. where you're coming from on that. Well, yeah. And and on my end too, like my husband and I, he works in my my business with me, you know what I mean? But like he does, he's really good at the things that I suck at and vice versa, Exactly. you know? So it just, we're like, we we always say we're a yin and yang. Like I am not, I'm not like him at all. He's not like me at all. You know what I mean? That's why it works. That's why it works. That's exactly why it works. So there's also that saying in business that if two people think the same way, then one of you is not necessary. Absolutely. (laughs) So I love that, you know? It, it just, really like it just is what it is. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a good thing to have have things in common, but it's also a good thing to be, be your own person as well. Absolutely. And I think also having having that juxtaposition of those of those ideas brings about more, more ideas. New ideas. Yeah, yeah exactly. You have the so same every, brain, like, you're contributing the same ideas, the same thoughts, and then your business is never really growing. It's just that's right. Staying. That's right. And just like, like with us, you know, we sit here, we've got a lot of things in common, but we have a lot of things that are not in common. So when we talk, we can figure out like we just did with the Masters Olympia. (laughs) Brainstorming, you know, a whole new business model. (laughs) whole new business model. We just, we just fixed it. We just fixed it right there. (laughs) Just in in our first podcast. (laughs) Who are these women? (laughs) Oh my God. Um, So Let's uh, let's wrap this up by talking about. We had a question that came in about um, loving yourself in all seasons yeah. and what that means to love yourself in season and off season, um, and how to do it, that kind of thing. So, um, it, go ahead, start on it. How do you how do you how do you approach appreciate it? yourself? Yeah, yeah, think, yeah, yeah. Obviously, I think it's different for everybody, but we're speaking on how I handle it. So the way yeah. I handle it is number one is mindset. So. As I know, when I know a show season is about to wind down, I really start to think about post-show and what I want that to look like in mindset. And I'm going to be the first one to be honest with you. I have not had a, a perfect post-show reverse yet until this last show. Um, it's, it's, it's always a little bit of a struggle for me. But I think what, what how I kind of approach it is setting the mindset of I just went all in with a prep. My focus was on cardio, was on training, was on getting ready for this show. And now I'm going to focus on still all of those things, but now focusing on maybe building my business and Mm -hmm. having nights with my husband again and date nights with my husband and how good I'm going to feel in the off season. I'm not going to feel depleted. I'm not going to feel run down. I'm going to enjoy lifting in the gym. So it's about shifting that mindset almost of what are the good things that are now going to come about? from being in an mm-hmm. off season and try to focus on more of that positivity aspect, not the negative yeah. of now I know I'm going to have to gain body fat. I'm going to have to start eating all this food again. And I'm going to feel lazy for the first six weeks after a prep because I'm not going all in and it feels weird. And you're in that transition. Just try to find that positive as a positive aspect. And I think it always gets really hard about 10 or 12 weeks post-show when you're starting to see lines go away and things disappear and things like that. And it's really important for me just to keep going back to how good I feel because you can't deny how much better you feel on higher food 
lower cardio. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a time and a place for all things. Um, and I think that the more that you do it, the better that you get at it. I think that the first two reverses are your worst because you're still navigating that mental component and what works for you and how to reverse. Some people need free meals for the first couple of days and then get back on strict macros or a meal plan. Some people need a splurge of macros right off the top so that they don't splurge on other things. And I think it's important to have that conversation with your coach a couple of weeks before you know the show is over. That way you have some sort of idea of what's coming and you're not worried about yeah. the unknown and maybe communicating to your coach what works best for you. Hey, I need an untracked meal right away once a week so that I know yep. I can stick to macros or this meal plan for the six out of seven days. Be communicative up front. That way you feel like you're really confident in your plan and what's coming. And that's kind of what's worked for me so far. Yeah. Yeah. And for, I would say the same, the same thing. So, you know, I, again, I started in this, in this industry when there was no such thing as a reverse diet yeah. that didn't exist. Absolutely. You know, it, this is a relatively new term yeah. that's happened in the last couple of years. So I came out of shows and would just binge. Like I remember my first long season when I came out of that, I, I ate nonstop for like two weeks and I put on no lie, 30 pounds. And it was, most of it was inflammation. You know what I mean? But I, I was going into like Christmas parties and I was looking at photos. I was like, holy shit, what did I do to myself? Yes. And that caught me real quick. And I turned it right around. Yeah. You know what I mean? But again, that went back to that. I'm starting to restricting again, you know, and it was, it was a bad cycle yeah, it was a yeah. bad cycle because I came, yeah. Cause I came from the, again, I came from the modeling world where you just starved yourself in order to get down to the 125 pounds. You know what I mean? So like it was, it was just a bad cycle of things. So, um, it was really hard for me at first to do the off season period. Um, because I would see myself getting thicker and, I, you know, again, coming from where I'd come from where thinner is better. Uh, it was just not something I could mentally deal with. Um, and also, you know, mindset from my generation is, you know, back in the nineties and stuff like that. It was like skinny is, is in, thin is in, you know, yeah. and curbs were not a thing. Right. Curbs were not something that that girls wanted it was not something that guys wanted you needed to be a size zero or less right. uh, or you were fat yep. and that was that was it you know so my first few first probably first probably 10 seasons off seasons were, were very very tough you know it was that that was why i was in a cycle of competing so much because i wanted to keep dieting because i didn't want to i didn't want to gain weight you want to stay lean you know? i didn't want to gain weight yeah. i wanted to stay lean i wanted to stay tiny i wanted to stay you know like that and at some points i looked like i would break in half like it was i was skinny like yeah. anorexic skinny like that wow and like so that's one of the reasons why i retired for a while because i just had this i had this bad association with everything of course. right why wouldn't you and that was yeah. And that's when I was doing meal plans and all that kind of stuff. And then um, when I decided I wanted to try this again, it was because I I'd stepped away from it. And I was like, I've been doing this wrong for a long time. Wow. Um, and I, I don't know what I would look like. I don't know what I could accomplish if I did it right. right. You know what I mean? So that's when I talked to Jamie and I started to come back for it. And I had lost a lot of muscle. I, I did a pageant I, and all this kind of stuff, kind of stuff. And even in the pageant, I was still one of the more muscular girls there and I had stripped off almost all of it. Wow. And I was like, all right, I got to build this all back. That's the first time I started doing macros. And all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, my, my, my eyes are open. Right. Yeah. And this is the time frame when girls are getting on social media thick and people are accepting that now. And it's like, oh, so I can gain weight now and it's not a bad thing, you know? And, and so I can, I can move forward with this. I actually like my off season be body better than I do my in season body. I was going to say you look so fantastic in the off season. And that's because I keep myself strict, Absolutely. you know, and again, strict doesn't mean restricted. Yeah. Strict means I've got a plan, plan. you know, yes. and, I'm, and I'm following yes. it. Right. Yes. You know, I tell people, I'm like, I get up to, you know, 2,500 calories a day kind of thing in the off season and no cardio and all that kind of stuff, yeah. you know, and I maintain my shape because I've worked hard at building that muscle back, you know? Yes. And so where some people have a hard time in off season because of the goal setting and things like that. I was there. I, I've been there before now. I like my off season better. Like I, I, I like having a goal of getting on stage and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, like you were saying, setting goals in the off season where I want to get stronger. 
I want to see this get bigger. I want to see this get smaller. I want to morph this part of my body or that part of my body, I, you know, that kind of thing. I want to feel good, you know, simple things like off season, my skin and my hair looks 10 times better because of the nutrients and stuff like that, you know, yes. like things like that make a big difference. Um, so, you know, I actually, like I said, I appreciate my body best when I've got more weight on me healthy. now to an, ex to an extent, to an extent, yes. <laughs> you know, uh, I know when I start to get a little bit, of, a little bit fluffy. Yes. Um, and then at that point we got to rein it yep. a little bit, yep. you know, uh, and that's okay. I'm that person. When I got off of my, um, my competitive season last year, I told Jamie, I was like, I need a free meal every week. Me too. <laughs> just, I just need to not track anything for one night yep. a week. Me too. That's it. Um, and so that was great for me mentally. And I never went really overboard with any calories and things like that. I just went out to out to dinner, had a date night where I was able to eat and not track it, you know. Yep. I mean? And I did that for about weeks. I did that for about six weeks. And in that time frame, you know, that's when your your hunger hormones are all over the place and everything like that too. So I was able to get those to kind of stable off. So I was able to get that under control. So I didn't overeat. Um, and I was able to just get everything kind of back where it needed to be. And then the, you know, my, my mindset got back into, okay, this is my goal. This is where I'm going. This is where I want to be, you know, and then you've got to be able to be, ad be adaptable as well, because initially we thought we were going to come back and compete at the beginning of the year, like springtime this past year. But oh, like I, haven't, but I, wow. haven't put on, I was like, I haven't put on enough muscle. I mean, I just, I need more muscle. I need more size. So You're realistic with yourself yeah. though. So we had to push it and, yeah. you know, and, um, and all those things you have to be, you have to be adaptable to it and be okay with it. Right. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, and at the end of the day, like I said, I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited to get back on stage, but at the same time, that's not for me, that's not my ideal physique. That's my, okay. I'm getting to a goal because I want to see what I've built and I want to see what I've done. Um, but it's not where I want to live. Right. I've gotten to that point where I like to live in my off season body. That's where yeah. I like to live. So it's not, it's, I, 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 I love myself in both situations, but the, the show day situation is more so be, I love myself because I made it there. Like I got to that point. And I put the the accomplishment. Kind of Correct. Correct. It's not yeah. a, it's not a, I think I look my best here. I don't, I don't think I look my best when I'm, when I'm stage lean. I think I look my best when I'm, I don't stage. either. Yeah. So, um, you know, every, everybody's going to be a little bit different, but I was in a completely different mindset of that when I first started doing all of this and it's taken, since 2009 <laughs> yeah. no, it's to great figure point. this out 14 years yeah. you know to no, figure all this point. out it's a great so point. you started there it was bro science it was yeah. like yeah let's you know let's get you diet down for the show water load here sodium load here pull here cool you're done 100%. with the show see you later see you for the next one it's not like yep. that anymore it's um not. I, I made a commitment to myself after the Olympia this year. I have a date on my calendar. It is eight weeks out from the Olympia and I have that date on the calendar. So I know that when that date hits, then I can have a little bit more fun. Obviously I'm gonna have a little bit of fun after the Olympia for the couple of days, but other than yeah. that, right back on my macros, what happened last year at the, after the Olympia, which is funny that we were talking about COVID and whatnot, I was sick and I had a cruise scheduled <laughs> and I was wondering if I was going to be able to get on the cruise and whatnot. All ended up fine, but I was on the cruise and listen, it was a year of prep and I just went all in. And by the time I got back, I think I was like 12 pounds or 15 pounds up from stage weight. It's not ideal, but that's what my brain needed at the time. And then when I got back, I was 100% on my macros, not ideal, not what I recommend at all. But again, that's what my brain needed at the time. And sometimes it's just about, you know, give and take and learning. And the more and more that I reverse and do this and learn about my body, the more I can find that plan and that structure that works for me. Like you have found that works for you too. And each time that I do it, I, I, I learn more and more. And that's what the sport's all about. Cause each yeah. of us are so different in what works for us. And yeah. it's just about finding that, that way we know we can stick to it. Absolutely. And then also like you were saying that the, the 12 pounds thing, like for me, that's not a big deal. You know, again, I'm, right. I'm, five, I'm five foot nine. I put 12 that pounds down in, in a freaking day, <laughs> you know? So again, it's finding your ideal situation too, yes. right? I yes. try to tell people like it's your body composition more so than it is the scale weight. Yes. Um, you know, for me, if I get up to, I like to live about 15 pounds up from my stage weight. That's where yes. I like to live. Yep. Um, and, and that's fullness, roundness, muscles are full. Um, I feel good. I feel, I look healthy, all those kinds of things. Sex um, hormones when, are good. Blood mm -hmm. panel is good. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yep. when I get up and over that 15 pounds is when I start to feel a little bit like my waistline gets a little squishy and I'm like, mm. yeah. 
Mm, not so much. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, and that and that's all. You start thinking, okay, when I go to prep again, I, I'm going to have to take all this off. You right. know what I mean? Right. So you got you got to know where your limits are. Um, and again, it's going to be different for every person. So, and that takes time. So I always tell people like, give yourself some grace as well. I say that too. Because we didn't yep. get this. We didn't get here in one one off season. Nope. Uh, you know, again, it's been 14 years for me, you guys. It's literally going on 14 years right now. Like I started in, in August of 2009. So, and you're you still know. learning about your body and and how right. it works and what works for you. That's right. And the cool thing about this too is that it's a lifelong thing. It's not like we're going to do this sport for a year. It's going to screw up our entire lives. <laughs> And then, and then we're done. No. But if you do this right and you do it with that education mindset and that goal setting mindset and things like that, you literally can do this for the rest of your life. You yes. know what I mean? And you can do it healthy. And that's the thing. It's like, it's not an instant gratification kind of sport. It's a sport where you have to do this diligently every single day of your life and you have to love it. It's the discipline. It's, it's all of that kind of stuff. It's not, it's not motivation. It's discipline. It's doing what you are supposed to do every single day. Yes. Um, and then, and just, and again, giving yourself grace as you, as you go along the way and being willing to learn and accept all of that too, at the same yes. time. So, yeah. Um, so when it comes to loving myself in all seasons, I definitely do finally, but it wasn't easy at first. It was not at all. Easy at first. <laughs> so, and, and there's still challenges with every mm -hmm. reverse. Like we're not perfect. We're not saying that. And I have my challenges too. When I look in my mirror and I'm 15 pounds up from stage weight and I'm like, but mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's really true. I, I think that the, the negative sport of bodybuilding is that we get a skewed version of what actually normal and healthy body yeah. image is. Absolutely. And it's really hard for us to, to find that place again, especially when you're someone like us, that's at bodybuilding shows every weekend. We look at Absolutely. people all day long. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's about really kind of taking a step back. This is an extreme sport that we are involved in. And there is a whole nother world out there of what healthy is and what non-healthy is and things like that. And our unhealthy or our, you know, extreme of body fat to another person is their most healthiest, right? right. And so it's really important to remember that. And and also to remember that we choose to do this sport. So be really careful with your words and how you're talking to people about, you know, I'm fat. Well, you're still 125 pounds. Right. So you look fantastic. Yeah. You know, so and just being a little bit more mindful of that as well, especially when you're talking to someone that's not in this world, because that could kind of skew their, their you know, thoughts about our sport or athletes or things like that. And it also, also makes us look a little, a little crazy. So. Yep. Neurotic. <laughs> we yeah. have body dysmorphia, you know, yeah, all of, exactly. all of the things, right? When in reality, we are the, the fittest people in the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yes. we're really, we, but you know, we're in a sport where we do critique ourselves daily. We critique yes. everything that we do hundred percent, everything, every day. That's what we do. That's yes. what we do. So it's like, you know, that we have to be mindful that that is our sport and that is not our real life. Right. Yeah. And that's not us. It's Correct. humans. That's right. You know, it's, it's our hobby, but that's we right. have so many other things of life. We're mothers, we're sisters, we're wives. You know, we have to attach ourselves to something else other than bodybuilding. Bodybuilding is not us. It's a part of our life. It's not our entire life or Absolutely. it shouldn't be anyway. Um, you know, you should have other things. And I think too, when it's, when it's, it's taking someone's entire life, that's where it almost gets to that big extreme point of, of not allowing yourself grace in the off seasons and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, you know, having other things and other ideas and other hobbies allows you to kind of step away from that mindset and be okay with the changes and the fluctuation. Yep. And like you said, you know, when you get into your off season, you start focusing on other things like your business and things like that too. Yes. Right. Yes. So focus on other things, you know, date night with your husband, all of those kinds of things. Right. Yes. The people so, in our life that take a back seat for 12 to 18 weeks that's right. matter too. Then it's time right. to step up and give that, give that same attention and time to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's a great place to wrap it up for this time. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so that's this was our very first um, of of weekly podcast here for Behind the Bikini. So if you're not already, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for you so you know when we do these uploads. Um, the goal is to get these out each week so you have something on the weekend um, to watch, like during your cardio theater and things cardio like theater. that. Cardio theater. Yes, cardio theater. <laughs> um, and Make sure that you comment below. Um, let us know if there are certain topics you want us to cover, yes. um, questions yes. that you have, things like that. 
we're going to come and talk about, you know, like I said, like current events and things like that that are going on in the sport right now, what we're doing, all that kind of stuff as well. But we want to hear from you and we want to know what you want us to talk about. Um, obviously, we have a lot of experience in this sport. If you're brand new, there's probably a lot of questions that you have that you're just scared to an- ask, you know, don't know who to ask or whatever. That's what we're here for. So, and this is um, a safe place, a safe place, safe place. space. <laughs> Safe place, safe space. <laughs> so, yes, I love it. <laughs> questions and we'll answer them. No one will know. And yes, we want this to be a place where you can come and get all of your questions answered. Yes. What, what, whatever you think, the smallest to the biggest question, we want to try to help you guys and catch you guys up on the years that we've spent on yes. our studying. Let's all put it here in one spot. Yes. And also, if you have ideas that you'd like us to shoot, like at, at shows and stuff like that, too. Like if there's yes. d- different content ideas that you have that you would like to see, let us know because it's it's all on the table. It's all on the table. Like we said, we're, we're at shows every weekend. So we have the ability to, to, to get a lot of the content that, um, that you guys want to see. So um, with that, thank you guys so much for watching and listening and joining along with us. And I hope that you will continue to do so. Um, again, subscribe, turn on notification bell, and we will see you back here next time with Behind the Key. Bye, guys.